So we have a mayoral appointment to the CUNY board. I made reference to it yesterday on the floor. That will uh, bring to the board seven new members. Seven new members. Um, later in the day, at some point, we're going to have three SUNY appointments. So we will reconvene uh, again. The mayor has sent us an appointment of someone who uh, some people at the table know, Lorraine Cortez Vasquez. Um, and I'm going to let her talk about her background briefly and answer any uh, questions. Uh, Senator Stavisky, uh, she's replacing Carol yes, Robles. Okay. I understand the significance. Okay. First of all, thank you. Thank you for taking the time out of this very hectic day um, to have this hearing out of the ordinary, so I'm very, very appreciative of that. Uh, second of all, I want to thank you personally, uh, <coughs> because I know how dear CUNY is and the importance of CUNY is to you as uh, the chair of this committee for so long. So let me tell you a little bit about who I am. I'm a native New Yorker. My family came to New York from both the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico in 1921, although I was raised in, as Puerto Rican. Um, I had a wonderful experience here. Um, my mother was born here. My grandmother was raised here. I went through the Catholic school system. I come from a very devout family, a very family that still practices. I also come from a very strong union background. My grandmother was a hotel uh, workers organizer in the 1920s when the union was just being formed. My grandmother was a chambermaid. My grandfather from the Dominican Republic was a chef. My mother is an accountant. My sister's a lawyer. So from that, from the very humble beginnings, there's a long line of lawyers, teachers, educators, um, and even a Secretary of State. I was blessed to be the 65th Secretary of State of the state of New York. I was not the first in my family to attend college, but I was the one that graduated from CUNY. And that is why CUNY, this appointment is so important to me. What CUNY does is afford individuals like myself, many of them, we have what, 274,000 of them, pursuing higher education because we know that higher education is the economic equalizer. And that is why CUNY is, is so important to us. Um, and the university system, you know, most of the students in CUNY are Pell Grant recipients which is also telling you that those are changing the lives of many New Yorkers economically. I can tell you that I take public service very seriously, and any duty that I am assigned, I discharge with the greatest um, effort. I strive for excellence. I don't take any commitment just for the title and the prestige of the position, but I take the responsibilities and the accountability service. And I come before you hoping that I can get your support in this endeavor. Thank you. Your employment presently is? Oh, I work for Emblem Health. Thank you very much. I am currently the Senior Vice President for Government and Corporate Affairs for Emblem Health, and Emblem Health has the distinction being one of the largest nonprofit uh, regional insurance companies, as well as having the distinction of being a health provider in the New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut area. And um, we are one of the very few nonprofit health providers and insurance companies left. 
And it's an organization that is going through a major transition, all for the better in this transformation, so that we can make sure that we are providing quality, uh, coordinated health care. <coughs> Committee has been asking uh, questions about conflicts. Do you foresee any conflict with your day job? I do not see any conflict with my day job or with any other any other responsibilities that I have. However, should any potential conflicts or appearance of a conflict arise, uh, I will also go to the CUNY uh, Council and ask for that to be reviewed and we will proceed accordingly. Okay. The, the only other question that I have that is important, and I know Senator Stavisky and I had talked about uh, that we, we did not go through this uh, with the, the other six members. Uh, something that I have responded uh, to during the budget period and um, came up yesterday on the uh, floor of the Senate on a piece of legislation is, is the pulling and tugging of First Amendment rights versus conflict of uh, <coughs> uh, uh, students being singled out with hate speech. And this um, I know I've asked the Chancellor to be very aggressive uh, on this. He has indicated he, he has. But we, at some point, this will be a um, board determination, I'm sure, because unless things just wither away. And these things have a tendency not to wither away. So what, what are your feelings on this conflict? I was going to say, what an easy question. Um, <laughs> yeah, these are very, very difficult times. Yes. And um, I do believe that you have the right to stand proudly for what you believe in. And I do believe that, um, you know, we have a saying in Spanish that it says, one community, many different voices. However, when that voice and that opinion infringes on someone else, and that's where you have to stop. When it, when it scars someone else, when it causes harm to someone else, then you have to take a step. And so yes, I do believe in, in the right of free speech, but your free speech stops where it infringes on someone else's inability to have free speech. But the other thing that is also important is that I can't believe that in 2016 we are having discussions that stimulate and provoke so much fear and hatred. And that is something that we all need to be very vigilant. And I don't know uh, how many of you were in the room when uh, Assemblyman O'Donnell, Daniel O'Donnell yesterday spoke about hate and that each one of us has the responsibility as a leader to stand up and interrupt and stop conversations that are hateful and harmful to others. We cannot perpetuate that. The society is changing, the city is changing, the state is changing. And we need to either educate ourselves about those changes but we also need to ensure that everybody's safe and that everybody's rights are protected. It is a difficult um, question. It is. And I know that there are different classes of individuals at different times. For instance, I grew up in a very, very tough <coughs> Italian ghetto called Red Hook in Brooklyn. And um, it was, um, uh, I personally, growing up at the time, uh, felt a lot of hate in Italian Americans. Mm -hmm. And I grew up with, with this. So um, 
as different people at different times in our history undergo very difficult um, times in terms of that they're not treated with any dignity nor any respect. So um, I foresee this as an issue that will come to the board and uh, I would hope that you would uh, continue to express uh, strong opinions uh, uh, and, and protect the students who at, at City University are feeling um, like they're not part of our, our culture. Yeah, uh, I personally have lived that as you have. I was born and raised in East Harlem during a period when East Harlem was still in transition. There was an Italian ghetto to the very east side of uh, East Harlem. Then there was the Puerto Rican ghetto in the middle of East Harlem. East Harlem is the area between 125th Street and 96th Street. Pleasant Avenue all the way down to Lenox Avenue. And then in the, in the most uh, northern part was a black community. There was a lot of tensions in those days and there was a lot of hate mongering and misinformation going across those boundaries all the time. And the one thing that that experience taught me was to stand up and be real clear about that those, there, were more, there was more in common than there were those distinctions, and to embrace that. And I've never been very tolerant of ignorance, <coughs> and I've always been committed to inclusion and to bridge building, and edu but through education, not through hammering. It's not through lecturing, it's through education and new information. The only thing that keeps that alive is fear and the lack of information. Other questions or Senator Stavisky? Yeah. Okay. You know she is our ranking, beloved ranking member. Yes, I, I, I do know her and I do love her for another Thank you. <laughs> and in fact, I had never met um, Lorraine Cortez of that Vasquez until her confirmation hearing in this room for Secretary of State. And I sat there and listened because uh, I think at that time I was relatively new to the Finance Committee. And first of all, I never knew the Secretary of State's office did all of those things that they do. It's amazing. But what struck me was how she, she already was familiar with each of the little um, nooks and crannies of the office and what they do because there are so many, everything from cemeteries to uh, land use. Um, and shortly after that, there was an issue in my Senate district um, concerning the use of brownfield money, BOA money. Uh, I wondered would she sit down with some of the folks from the community, uh, including the former borough president. And uh, absolutely, she was helpful. They got their BOA money. Everything worked out uh, terrifically. And I really appreciated the willingness to uh, to work with community organizations, because I think that's extremely important. I want to mention a couple of other things. I'm glad you mentioned your union ties, because I'm very troubled, and I've said this publicly, with the lack of a contract on the part of the faculty, uh, not just the faculty, but the staff, because DC 37, as well as the professional staff, Congress, and there may be other unions, do not have, a, have not had a contract since 2010. Uh, and I hope you will focus on that. But I do have um, uh, one question in response to the issue that Senator Laval brought up. CUNY has ha had an extensive response, whether it be the uh, uh, investigation, the uh, uh, appointing of a committee, et cetera. Are you satisfied with um, how CUNY is approaching this issue? Because I know they've done a great deal in terms of trying to answer the questions of um, uh, difficulties on college campuses. To be honest with you, I don't have enough information on it. Um, I know this was all pretty fast. Yeah, this was all very, very fast. Um, so I don't have enough information as to what have been the actions, um, but I trust that they have been on the right path, but I will look into them and make sure 
that I weigh in on that because it's one of those issues that is very important, um, not only to me, but to this changing demographic that we're experiencing in Cuba. Because the uh, issue that came up on the floor yesterday uh, is of concern because I was not pleased with the response, with the bill. I did vote for it very reluctantly, uh, but I'm truly concerned that this is not the response because uh, it would have prevented any money from, go from going to the city university. And as you know, many of the organizations are funded not with university money, but with student fees. Uh, and I just don't want to see the students punch. That's really, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the bottom line. So I make a commitment to really look into that issue. Take a look at the issue. But there are so many other issues that are involved right. here. It's not just, I think yeah. the real issue here is the seven new CUNY trustees and the path that they're going to take for the future of CUNY. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. Thank you for the question. I think, yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry to be late. I was debating the bill on the floor. Um, I've asked every, um, excuse me, every new candidate to be a CUNY trustee the same question. Does your current day job put you in any fiduciary conflict with your responsibilities? I had asked you that in your absence, oh. Senator. But it, and, and the answer was? No. No. no, no, and should and anything should. ever arise or appear to be a potential conflict, I will take it to the general counsel of CUNY and have it reviewed, and then remove myself from whatever the decision making process is at the top. You know, thank and you. To thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes, Senator Parker. Mr. Senator, thank you very much. Um, so let me just say um, in advance, congratulations. Um, uh, as they say the black church, you know, um, we haven't confirmed yet, but I'm claiming this victory for you. And, um, you know, you and I have known each other for a very, very long time. Um, we're going back, I think, at least to the Hispanic Federation. Yes. And work there. Um, I'm not sure if you mentioned here, but everybody should know that you're a, a CUNY graduate and haven't gone to Hunter. Yes. And so um, it's, it's, it's good that you know, you're coming home to actually help um, shepherd an organization that, that you benefit from and your family has benefited from. You've done excellent work no matter where you've been, um, whether it's a static federation, uh, AAP, and um, in all the places that I've, I've, I've interacted with, and I've been fortunate enough to have an opportunity to interact with you literally in, a, in, um, in an official capacity. And I've been, as some of my colleagues have mentioned, a, a beneficiary of the attentiveness and the professionalism of your, your wide knowledge base. And and, um, and and the hard work that you bring to every position that, that you have. So I know you do and, uh, another exceptionally, um, you know, ex exceptional job here at CUNY. And I'm looking forward to working with you there as well. Thank you so much for your past service. I'm looking forward to uh, us continuing to collaborate and, and make CUNY a great place. Thank you for your generous words. Senator Rivera. Much like the current Secretary of State, who we uh, conferred yesterday, the former Secretary of State also uh, is someone that I'm very proud and happy to call a friend uh, and a mentor. And uh, an example, before I even met her, much like the Secretary of State, that was on Rosado, before I met her, I knew of her, I knew of her work. I'm very glad to be able to sit here at the Senate today and say that uh, I would be very proud of both your nomination. Glad that you are, uh, that you have been nominated. I know that you've already done great work, both in the private sector and the public sector. Why would you kind of bring you back into it, particularly as it relates to uh, the jewels of the state? So, uh, thank you so much for accepting my responsibilities. I very much enjoy it. I'm looking forward to working along with you and continuing to be very, very proud of you. Thank you. Seeing no other questions, I just want to briefly show you the um, makeup of this committee and how. Uh, brought Senator Seward is uh, from the Oneonta area, represents nine counties up uh, upstate. Senator Serino is Dutchess County. Uh, then we go across the table, Senator Gallivan from Erie County. Senator Ritchie from the North Country, Jefferson County. Huh? 
St. Lawrence. Senator Funky from the Rochester area. Oh, my son's from Rochester. <laughs> Senator Funky may be his senator. Senator Robach was here. He's the other uh, twin from the Rochester no. area. Senator Croce from Suffolk County. Senator Vendetto from Nassau County. Senator Kruger from Manhattan. And you know, of course, Senator Rivera from the Bronx. And of course, uh, Senator Parker from Brooklyn. That is our uh, committee that is uh, seated here, but as you can see, it's very, very broad, cross representing the entire state. Um, do I have a motion to move the nomination? Okay. Senator Stavisky, second by Senator Parker and Kruger, and uh, you'll sign the sheet. Good luck to you. We have to sign the sheet. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you.